Hello universe, welcome to my world. Today when we're doing an Angelina Jordan, we're doing her by following a Christmas song. I know, I know it's the wrong time of year to be doing a Christmas song, but sometimes you have to go where the music takes you. Sometimes you just have to follow the music. And the song we're doing today is Silent Night, which is probably one of the most famous Christmas songs throughout history. And today we're going to look at how a song went viral 200 years ago. It was first performed in 1818. It was, the music was written by the church organist and the lyrics by the local priest in a small village called Oberndorf near Salzburg in Austria. And bit by bit, it went worldwide viral. The local organ repairman heard it and loved it and he brought it to the next village. Some children heard it, and within 20 years, it was a musical family who were performing it in New York City around the same time that the religious king of Prussia heard it and wanted it performed in every church. This was in the 1830s, 1840s. Fast forward 100 years, and in World War I, in 1914 Christmas Day, during the famous Christmas truce between the British and the Germans, when they were playing football and they were singing Silent Night, respectively in the English language and the German language. And this was immortalized in the famous video by Paul McCartney 40 years ago called Pipes of Peace. There have been hundreds of great artists over the years who have sung the song. The first pair we will listen to are both Canadian and they have something very important in common. They both were discovered by the famous Canadian music producer David Foster. Here David Foster is telling the wonderful story of how he first discovered Michael Bublé and then when we hear Josh Groban it's actually David Foster himself who is playing the piano. Sure, Prime Minister Mulroney uh, Brian is a, is a great friend and he indeed did point me in the Michael Bublé direction and the way it happened was it turned out it was a bit of a setup but it was Brian's uh, daughter's wedding and uh, they had Michael Bublé as the wedding singer as the real wedding singer and I remember clearly being at the wedding, this was 12 years ago, and uh, just sitting at my table enjoying myself and just wanting to blend. And the Prime Minister came over and said, this kid's coming out, you, you, gotta, you gotta see this kid. And I said, okay, well, yeah, I'll watch him. Said, no, you've got to come to the front of the stage and see him. And he literally, as God is my witness, grabbed me by the arm and took me to the front of the stage and said, now stand here and watch this. And Buble came out like, when this shark, and I went, and I, I was hooked within the first 10 seconds. So he did, in fact, make me watch him. But after 10 seconds, um, he can only take credit for the first 10 seconds. <laughs> and, and after that, it was just uh, painfully obvious how incredible this guy was. But yes, Brian uh, should feel really good about, uh, about that. Silent night, holy night, oh. I would call those two traditional versions. Now we're going to hear two holy versions. First we're hearing from Sissel. The more I hear and the more I know about Sissel, the more I appreciate her. In Norway she is a national treasure. She's very wholesome and she tells wonderful stories. She tells of how Christmas is celebrated in the Nordic countries with lighting different colored candles in different countries. And also doing a holy version is the controversial Irish singer Sinead O'Connor who exploded on the international scene with her performance of Prince's Nothing Compares With You. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is
Now, you would think with this song, being a traditional Christmas song, that you would not get hugely unconventional versions. Well, we do. And the first one is by a Scottish indie band called Las Vegas. And following that, we're hearing from Tom Waits. Tom Waits' version is unusual because he has such a gravelly voice. <laughs> Now, the next two, when we hear Elvis Presley and Bing Crosby, we finally reach the classics. Elvis Presley is immediately recognizable, and so is Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby's version is actually one of the top five most popular songs ever. Not just of the song, but of any song. Silent night. Now we are doing an Angelina Jordan channel, and Angelina Jordan also has done this song. We're also hearing two versions from her. There's very, very little time gap between these two versions. I believe they're both from December 2014, just before she turns nine years old. And what's striking about these two versions is how different they are. One of them is very forceful and dramatic, and the other one is much more traditional. You can't really say that she is absolutely the best singer of the song ever. But you can certainly see her raw talent and her potential. And what's striking is how different these two versions are by her within such a short time. And one more thing I want to say about Angelina Jordan. She does talk about communicating love when she sings. And we have talked about this before. But how does a young child understand and connect music with love? What type of experience do they have at such a young age to make this connection together? As one of the Norwegian judges said to Angelina, you are music. And she took in music and love along with mother's milk. This is Angelina Jordan. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round the young virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild sleep in a heavenly peace sleep in a heavenly peace it's amazing how a song could go viral 200 years ago 
even before there was electricity, bit by bit. But eventually, class does come through and quality does show. And because quality comes through and class shows, that's why we have an Angelina Jordan channel. Okay, gang, I'm out of here. I'll catch you later. Bye.